All right, guys, this is DJ Wolf of Sports Podcast. This is DJ Wolf Live here on YouTube. Um, and my channel, of course, is For All Tier TV. Let me talk about it. Let me get in. Let's go. Now, last night, well, actually, really, uh, well, yeah, it was last night. Uh, there was a piece that came out on Six Minutes uh, last week that I actually got to see. One of my favorite female idols of all time, and I do mean it, uh, because she was so gorgeous. Oh my God, I was, I was, I was infatuated. I was somewhat infatuated, even when I was a kid. And it has a little bit of a special meaning to me because that was the first date that my parents went to to see her film. Uh, it was actually her breakthrough film at the time too, and. Uh, the woman was absolutely stunning. One of the most stunning women, I think, and one of the most underrated women I've ever seen in Hollywood to this day. And yes, I said it because it's true. A um, couple things I learned about her, I was shocked to read. A couple things I, 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 I didn't realize that kind of like, I was really sad about her. But nevertheless, uh, 60 Minutes did a piece on uh legendary act but underrated actress Rena Moreno who used to be one of my early uh, childhood crushes man oh my god this woman was an amazing gorgeous woman and I'm talking about stunning stunning and uh, I was watching I didn't realize a couple things I didn't know I didn't know that she started out her acting career at a uh, young age in 1950 so really, she's been doing this damn thing pretty much for seven decades. That's number one. Uh, number two. Number two. I didn't know that she messed around with a then married Marlon Brando. And Marlon Brando was like, excuse my French, Marlon Brando was the shit during that era. So, you know, he could get anything he wanted. Definitely got her. Damn. But anyway. And, uh, like I said, my parents went to go see uh, her legendary film, West Side Story. And uh, they mentioned about that uh, infamous uh, rape scene that she was in. and She was very powerful. And it was very moving. I remember seeing that movie. I've seen it about three times. And personally, I can honestly say it is one of my all-time favorite films. Be better than Gone with the Wind, as far as I'm concerned. You know, which I wasn't too crazy about Gone Win because of a couple of things that, of course, obviously Gone with the Win. But definitely uh, West Side Story was wrong. Plus, the fact my parents, uh, their first date <laughs> was to go see. They went to go see West Side Story. So it's definitely one of my favorites. So I actually hold this place in my heart. You know, because of that. Come on. Let me Anyway, so. But, I mean, she's been, she's been in a, a number of films starting from, the, I think, from the age of 15, 16, something like that. And uh, and then she went on to do several films. The problem is that Rhea Moreno, although she was of African-American descent, she was, I think she was uh, Puerto Rican, I think. Spanish. I mean, I don't want to say what she, what she ain't, but I do want to give her credit for who she is. Um, but she, she is of Hispanic descent, and uh, she was talking about, and I didn't know this either that she was uh, she got typecast in a lot of roles. I didn't know that either. Yeah, I think she said like one or two roles where she wasn't actually typecast in, but most of her films she was typecast, typecast in for decades. And the thing of it was. After she did West Side Story, not only did she get typecast in that, she did win an Oscar for her portrayal, her portrayal in the film. But she didn't get almost no roles after that. Nothing, uh, uh, no, nothing really meaty or you know major or anything like that. She didn't get any real roles after that, and then she went. She went on Broadway and got Tony. 
They actually went on television in 1970. Uh, I know it was early 70s, like probably about 71, 72, when uh, I started watching a show called The Electric Company. My cousins actually turned me on that. And uh, her and another future uh, winner, actor Morgan Freeman, who played easily one of my favorite characters on The Electric Company. So I actually had love and respect for both of these accomplished actors, you know, and and I thought about that because it took Morgan Freeman years before he got any real shine in Hollywood himself. Years, you know. I think he did like he had been appearing in like a couple of films during his earlier career, and then he started uh, gaining momentum after the uh, late seventies, early eighties, you know, and. Uh, Kind of same deal with Marie Moreno, you know. After a while, you know, she started picking back, picking up speed in 1990. In 1990, she uh, ended up going, uh, uh, going on HBO's uh, Oz. The series lasted for several years, several seasons, and uh, I think she won an Emmy for that. But I didn't even know she won a grant. I was like, wow, she won. So she's an e guy, which amazes me. She was an e guy. But never really got her shine as an e guy. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm amazed by that. Because I was thinking about that earlier. I said, "Wow, this is a woman who accomplished so much in her 60 plus odd years of film and television, and you know, Broadway." And I, I kind of felt like I know some people are like, "Well, don't feel bad for her because you know she, you know she, she's accomplished so much, and she's in the new uh, uh, reboot of West Side Story that Steven Spielberg." Uh, just put out. Not that I'm going to see it. I, I, I mean, I probably won't watch it anyway because I like the original myself. But I do like her. That's the only reason I didn't see it. Because I used to have serious pride. I thought she was one of the most gorgeous women in Hollywood. But one of the most underrated. I mean, I'm just, I mean, seriously underrated women in Hollywood, really. And to me, I've always thought it was a crime. Because for a while, I was wondering, what ever happened to her? You know? And now I know, you know, it's it's racism. Uh, pure and simple. I know some people are like, well, you're going to put brown black people together. Well, yeah, in this case, I will. Because this is a woman who is a major and gorgeous woman in Hollywood. And she still got typecast. And she got biased out just like everybody else, you know, who who's of color. In her, in her defense, I'm going to say that. And it wasn't fair. It wasn't right. You know. It, it, it just, it's just bullshit. I mean, I mean, to me personally, it's bullshit. And after I heard it, I, I got upset. I got really, really upset about it. Because I said, that's a damn shame. This woman had it going on. She had the looks. She had the acting chops, man. And um, she could sing. At least uh, from what I remember her doing in West Side Story. And it's like, that's ridiculous. I, I just, I, I, I just, man, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, it just kind of like ticked me off because we've had women like that before. Dorothy Dandridge was, was another prime that She got used to using Hollywood too. Uh, just like uh, Rita Moreno did at one time. You know, and it's, it's really a shame. You know, yet you can't get the roles that you want anyway. You know, it, 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 it's it was heartbreaking. I, I, I mean, my wife, we were talking about it. Was, it was kind of heartbreaking. I, I mean, to be personal, I, I thought about that. You know, you you went through the ranks all those years up there, and you really don't get, and still today, don't really quite get uh, get the shine like you should. I've been saying that for a long time about her. Man. I said, wow. You know? But in general, it's like it doesn't matter uh, if, if if you're if you're if you're melanated, then you go to the highs and highs. Now, now Obama. Now this is a guy who I don't agree with on a lot of policies he did over the years, a lot of things he's done as president. But one thing I say, I respect him for him being a Harvard professor. This guy taught law at Harvard, All right? Obama's not a dumb guy. Not by a long shot. Yeah, he got used by 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 by, by, uh, by other politicians 
within his own party and uh, GOP as well. But he's a brilliant guy. You can't take that away from him. The problem is people didn't respect some of the policies that he was trying to put out and didn't respect him in general because he was black man that was president. They just didn't respect him at all because of that. And and I'll say this. I think regardless of how you felt about his policy, respect the presidency and respect him as the man that he was. And a lot of people didn't because they didn't respect who the man was. But I will say this also. Obama did a cheap trick. Yes, and I'm going to say, yes, I said it. Obama did a cheap trick on the people of Flint, Michigan. And, and as, as saw in the movie Fahrenheit 11.9. Where his ass went there, pretend like he was drinking some Flint water, and he got booed because people knew he was bullshit. And I thought it was the most disrespectful thing he ever did to the American public to this day. But still, white people didn't respect him either. No matter what he did for them, they still don't respect him. They diss now. Yeah. But we have to keep on pushing, keep on shining, man. I mean, and I'm and I'm seeing shine, you know, reach for the stars, man. I always tell my, my, my kids, I said, look, don't sell for nothing. Don't sell for nothing less. Now, and I told my son too, I said, don't sell for nothing when it comes to women, cars, jobs, anything else. Don't sell for less. Why should you? They don't. You should. And I mean the right there, people. Because that's a fact. You should. That's all I got. It's DJ Wolf.